Hi, my name is Dr. Gary Bedicher and I'd like to welcome you again to the Graduate Database class. In this unit we're going to be talking about relational database design theory. Now that sounds like a mouthful and might scare off some of you but it's a really important concept and if you understand that you'll go far in terms of your database analysis. Part of my experience is that people that do databases, people that can program in SQL are like a dime a dozen. But people that understand databases and the normal forms, which we'll talk about in future units, that's really important because I've worked as a consultant. I've seen databases in the airline industry, databases in the hospital industry. And some of these major databases, I won't say the company's names, are in like first normal form and it makes me really scared to either go to the hospital or get on a plane knowing that these back-end databases are operating uh, their equipment. So, without further ado, let's start in on the unit. Now the first thing I want to talk about is what's called functional dependencies or functionally determines. If you look at the notes in the definition, we have a, a relation R and two instances within R, and if for those two instances if they agree on the X attributes, they must agree upon the Y attributes. If that's the case, we see X function determines Y. Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples here of, you know, function determines. I put an example on the board, and I've got a table here. And if you look at this table, we've got three columns, social security number, last name, and first name. And the question is, we want to look at this notion of functionally determines. Well, remember we said if two rows agree on the X attributes, they must agree on the Y attributes. Okay, let's see if Social Security number functionally determines the last name. Well, as we look at the data here, we see we've got Social Security number 111, 222, 333, another 111, 444, and 555. Well, it's obvious the first and the fourth tuple agree on the Social Security number 111, I abbreviate obviously. And we see that they've got the same last name. So they agree on the X attributes, and they also agree on the right hand side of the Y attributes. So they agreed on social, they agreed on name. We would say is a valid functional dependency. Normally, what happens is there's a domain expert, somebody who knows your either client data or student data and says this makes sense, A depending on B. But this is a way to see whether or not there's an invalid functional dependency. Let's try an example. Does last functionally determine the first name? Well, here we have in this example, we've got the name Smith, Jones, Smith, Smith, Jones, and White. Here we've got two Smiths. They agree on the last name, but they do not agree on the first name, Bob and Joe. So in this case, we would say that last name, the X, does not function to determine the Y, in this case, the first name. So that's an example of where we've seen function determines if they agree on the X attributes, like Social Security number, or left-hand side, they must agree on the right-hand side or Y attributes. Okay, let's talk about logically implies. Now in this example I've got behind me, we've got a table relation and we'll call it R, where we have social security number, state, and country. And we'll assume that given the social security number we can find the state, maybe the state where somebody lives, and given the state where somebody lives we can find their country. So in this case, and that might not be a good assumption, but we'll go with it. So we would say social security number functionally determines the state, and we would say the state functionally determines the country. Okay? So we have two functional dependencies in this little example here, and typically what happens, we put curly braces around them, and we call that set of functional dependencies F. All it is is a set of functional dependencies. Now we're going to get a little abstract here, and rather than use actual names, we're going to replace these names with letters here. So we'll come up with something that looks like this. 
And as you can see, instead of having attribute names, I use A, B, C, and functional pen C set is A function determines B, and B function determines C. Now, in the notes, there's a formal definition of functionally determines and logically implies. Make sure you know these definitions precisely because they're really, really important as we do work in databases. And I want to see you do well. Now, <clears throat> the idea is that given a set of functional dependencies, what can we logically imply? Well, obviously it includes A function determines B, B function determines C, and also A function determines A, B function determines B, C function determines C, A function determines C, and this list of logically implied functional dependencies can get rather very, very large. What happens is we have, from a set theory perspective, Just imagine we have this set F, which is the functional dependencies, A function determines B, and B function determines C. And then we have the A function determines A, and A function determines C, and B function determines B, and C function determines C, and so forth. And we have actually a super set of functional dependencies, which we're going to refer to as F closure. So the idea F closure is a set of functional dependencies logically implied from F. It's a big, big set. Now part of the problem is to figure it out is a rather difficult problem. And so if we have uh, let's say three attributes, theoretically there's two to the third possibilities in terms of how we can uh, two to third possibilities in terms of permutations for picking an attribute. Functionally determine two to the third, which would give us about two to the two times n, where in this case n is three. But if n were 10 or 100 attributes, this set would get huge, quite a large set. So rather than try to figure out all these permutations, we're going to need a formal mechanism in order to determine whether a functional dependency is an F closure or not an F closure. But before we do that, <clears throat> we need a new definition for a key. Okay? We've had previous definitions, or we had definitions of a key in previous uh, videos and notes. But now we're going to introduce another new definition in terms of what is a key. X is a key, where X is a, one or more attributes. If it functionally determines all the attributes in R. So X is a key if it functionally determines all the attributes in R. Now what is important is X is minimal with respect to number one, condition one. So the idea is <clears throat> all the attributes in a relation can function determine all the other attributes, but that doesn't mean it's a key. Just let's say you had a student record, all the attributes could determine itself, right? So we want to reduce all those attributes to the bare minimum, and that's the reason why we have condition two. So X is a key if it function determines all the attributes in R, and it's minimal with respect to condition one. Now where have we seen something like that before? Remember? Candidate key, that's right. So, what we really have done is define candidate key in terms of uh, these functional dependencies. But that doesn't solve our problem. And the problem we have is with this notion of logically implies and F closure, the set is huge. So, as I said, we need a me mechanical way to figure out whether a functional dependency is in the set F closure or not in the set. And that's where we introduce this thing called Armstrong's axioms.